Welcome back to another video featuring the grounds mod. In my previous video for this mod, I went over the nuclear reactors and the heat exchangers this mod has to offer. Today I expand upon the heat exchanger part by making this industrial sized boiler which utilizes all 16 turbines, makes over 3.5 million stress units and over 2 million Fe or RF per second. Now I went over a lot of designs before I settled with this one so it's gonna be a good one. Without any further ado, let's get straight into this video. I'm going to start by allocating some space for this entire build and as it is going to be a big one, 6 chunks should be enough. So in a 3x2 pattern, I'm going to set them to underside casing and that's a 6 chunks assigned. Now the boiler itself, it's going to be 12 blocks long in total. In order to make the base for the boiler, I'm going to use the block of industrial iron and using that make a 12 long line like this on top of which lava is going to sit. Now in a similar manner, make 5 more such rows. So that will be a total of 6 rows and now we can start covering these up on the sides so that lava doesn't flow out. So make an enclosure which looks something like this and then you can start doing the same thing on the remaining 5 of these lines like this and that's our enclosure done. Now in here we can start filling lava and uh, using world edit. It's pretty easy because you can just use the command of replace air with lava. However, in survival, you won't be able to do that. So that's why I'm just going with hand filling up lava like this. And by the way, one thing that I noticed is that lava blocks don't need to be actual source blocks. You can actually use a single piece of lava and let it flow and that will result in the same temperature. Now I'm going to place down some fluid pipes on these six points like this. And in the middle, we can start placing heat exchangers. So the heat exchangers are going to go in an alternating pattern. So here comes the input line where the feed water is going to come in. Then we connect a pipe and then a heat exchanger going the opposite direction. And we are going to repeat the same process for making all of the six rows of heat exchanger. So 12 heat exchanger in every row and total of six rows. That means we have 72 heat exchangers on this lower portion of the boiler here. So that's all done. And now we take the pipe or basically the pump up. Anyways, in order to get some more lava, make a similar enclosure that we did on the bottom side so that lava once again doesn't flow out. And yeah, world edit. If you have that mod, Make sure to use the command just replace air with lava and that should fill all of these blocks with lava. And here you can see me placing down single blocks and the temperature is still the same. So yeah, you can place down a single piece of lava and let it flow. Now covering the top up and uh, making sure that the heat exchangers that we placed, they also have lava on the top side. And in this way, the heat exchangers on the bottom will have lava on all four sides and the temperature will go up to roughly 550 degrees Celsius. Now from the pump that we had, which went up, we can start placing the second row of heat exchangers once again 72. And this will total up to 144 heat exchangers in this two layer or two level setup. So similar to what we did below, making sure that uh, you are alternating the directions of the heat exchanger bring the entire line and uh, once you connect it that should ensure that the input and the output should be aligned on the top and bottom like this and the pump arrow should be facing in the opposite direction on the top and the bottom now we just do the similar process of filling up lava on the sides and then finally on the top and with that, both the top and the bottom layer of the heat exchangers should reach their maximum temperature. And this will be helpful because we need the steam to be saturated. We need it to be 100% dry steam. All right, so that's the lava filled. And now I'm going to close up the top. However, in the middle, I'm going to leave some gap where you can place down some trapdoors where uh, the temperature of the water can be checked and if there is a problem in any of the pumps they can also be verified by basically opening the trapdoor and seeing if the heat exchangers have water in them or not now it's time to connect all of these pumps so on the back we have the six so you can connect them using cogwheels or these encased chain cogwheels from create connected 
and uh, using gearboxes and some shaft this process becomes easier and we extend these shafts in the front where now we can start connecting the front pumps now you can do this process any way you want this is how i am doing it so rotating the encased cogwheel it looks something like this and now here we can place some encased chain drive with and uh, yeah the double carbon shaft and it looks something like this now we place the input and the output pump and rotating the direction so that bottom one is input top one is output and connecting these two pumps with the entire line of cogwheels and let's test this system so now everything should be spinning if we have 13 pumps in total all of them should be spinning and yeah that's all of the connections done right now the input motor is going to be set at a speed of 96 for this entire contraption as this entire thing can support a fast feed through and creative tank for water as basically we are not going to recycle water now i placed the pipe here which was a mistake kind of i am going to correct it but for now let me show you what happens when you place down a pipe at the output and then place the steam input so here i am going to place down 16 turbines and now let's see what is the stress that we generate so i'm going to start the entire setup we are producing steam which is 100 percent dry steam however it will not reach till the 16th turbine which is the last turbine that is why we are not getting the maximum amount of stress units that we can produce it is still 3.5 million however we can get more than that and for that i'm going to place the steam input directly after the pump uh, move everything back by one and yeah make this support structure sort of and with that all 16 turbines will spin now and we will get after saturation like after the steam power dies down we will get close to 3.7 million stress units 3.7 3.8 it will fluctuate between that now in order to use up all of these stress units i'm going to use the coils the generator coils from create new edge mod using the netherite magnets and a total of 46 of the coils the magnetic coils total 46 of them now for a single generator you can use a maximum of eight coils which is why you can make a total like enclosures like this eight of them sorry not five of them and then the last one will just compose of six instead of eight placing down coils and then connecting them using the encased chain drive and we need to get this connection to our turbine output so here i'm going to use an inverted clutch to turn the generators on and off and use a double carbon shaft to connect all of these so yeah as i said 46 of the coils and carbon brushes in front of them and the coils which are eight basically uh, yeah in the row of eight this will give you a maximum power output of 17.28 uh, fe per tick in order to store all of this power i am going to use the induction matrix from mechanism you can use whatever you want to use however we are going to produce a lot of power 2 million fe per second so yeah make sure you have enough power storage connecting all of this and uh, making a sort of support structure for this shaft which looks something like this looks pretty cool actually and now we can start the lever and that will nearly use up all of the stress units that we are producing and yeah if you have set the output right on the energy cubes then it should work properly however if you haven't then you can just configure the sides and as the cables can directly connect to carbon brushes that is why i'm using the energy cubes as a buffer however we are getting 99.36 thousand fe per tick which is close to 2 million fe per second which is a lot of power now i have been having a lot of fun with this mod by trying out different boiler designs so make sure to let me know in the comment section below if you have any favorite boilers or what you think of this mod also if you have any questions let me know them and if you like this video make sure to like it and subscribe for more content like this i'll see you guys in the next one till then peace out and stay safe